Now we've already do done the law of sines, but you may have found that sine law does not work in every situation. And so today's topic is the cosine law. And today's goal is to understand how to tell when a situation requires the law of cosines and to apply it to find sides and angles in a non-right triangle. So we are working on uh, section 610 of the McGraw-Hill Math Power 10 notebook textbook uh, on the cosine law. So as you can see, it says, we learned that to use sine law, you need to have one angle and its opposite side to both have numbers on it. There are two instances where sine law is of absolutely no use to us. And here are those two instances. The first one is where we have an angle and uh, the two sides connected to it. And the second one is in this instance where we are given all three sides with numbers on it and we have no angles whatsoever. We have all three sides that are known values. In all of these instances, we do not have an angle with a side across from it and therefore we cannot use sine law. So in these cases, we need to use the law of cosines. And so I'm going to introduce the law of cosines to you now. This is what it looks like. I'm not going to prove it for you. You can look up the proof if you need to. Uh, but we are going to learn to use it. If in triangle ABC, sides A, B, and C in lowercase letters are opposite angles A, B, and C, the uppercase letters respectively, uh, the following property holds true. C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB times the cosine of C. Now please note here, and this is stated in very plain terms, um, but the whole respectively thing um, goes along with this note. Uh, sides little a and little b are the sides that make up angle C, and side little c is the side directly across the triangle from angle C. And so that formula is our cosine law, but we're going to rearrange that cosine law now so that we can solve for an angle. And I'm just going to show you how to do that. Uh, if we start with the cosine law, which is c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab times the cosine of c, I'm going to get the uh, cos of c by itself. So to start with, I'm going to add this term to both sides. The, the side that has the cos C, I'm going to add to both sides. So I'm going to have over here um, C squared plus 2AB cos C. And that's going to equal A squared plus B squared. And now I'm going to subtract the C squared from both sides which gives me 2AB cos C and on the other side A squared plus B squared minus C squared. Okay. And then the next thing I'm going to do to get cos C by itself is to divide both sides by the 2AB. And if I divide both sides by 2AB, I get cos C equals A squared plus B squared minus C squared over to AB. And there's the rearranged version of cosine law where we have an angle isolated on one side uh, and as opposed to the other one we, heard, we had a side isolated on one side. So here we have our two versions of cosine law. We have the first version of cosine law, this one here which is most useful for finding the sides in a non-right triangle. And this one here, there's the triangle, and this one over here for find, oops, should be over 2AB for finding the sides, or finding an angle when we're given all three sides. I'm going to go through two examples. Uh, and then some word problems. Uh, example number one, find the value of side C in this given triangle. 
So I've given you this triangle and I want to find side small c. We know from the naming convention of triangles that this is the side I'm looking for right there, side little c. And since we're finding a side, I want this version of the cosine law, c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos c. So since I'm looking for side little c, the two sides that I'm going to use for a and b are the ones that surround the angle that I'm given. And so I need 28 squared plus 16 squared minus 2 times 28 times 16 times the cos of the angle between them, which is this 89 degrees. So the cos of 89 degrees. Now when I figure that out, we have uh, 28 squared plus 16 squared is 1040. Uh, minus 2 times 28 times 16 is 896. So minus 896 times the cos of 89. And then you can just type that whole thing into your calculator. Beware of uh, order of operations. You must do this multiplication here before you do that subtraction. So just type it all into your calculator and your calculator can handle that for you. We actually get 1024.36. And don't forget that that is, in fact, c squared. And so to find what c is, we have to take the square root of that answer. And c is going to be the square root of 1024.36, which turns out to be 32 centimeters, 32.0 centimeters. Now, this is just a little bit of a note down here. Always remember that whatever side you are finding is on the left-hand side of the equation, and the angle across from that side is this C on the right. So now moving on to our next example. Uh, what happens if we have all three sides of the triangle? When using cosine law to solve a triangle, you will only have to use it once, and then you will have an angle across from an opposite side and can therefore use sine law. But remember, you should never use sine law to find the biggest angle in a triangle in case it happens to be obtuse. So if I were solving this particular triangle, I would not find B with sine law. Uh, if I found B with sine law um, and it was obtuse, the calculator would give me the acute angle that went with it, and so we have to be very careful with that. So since I'm going to use cosine law to find an angle in the first place, the first angle I'm going to find is B, because it's the biggest one, and if it happens to be obtuse, cosine law can handle it, sine law can't. So we're going to look at B first when we're solving this following triangle. So I'm going to start by finding B with cosine law and since we're finding an angle I'm going to use the rearranged form of cosine law which says cos c equals a squared plus b squared minus c squared over 2ab now, don't forget that those a, b's and c's really don't mean anything to us at this point uh, because the triangle is labeled with a, b's and c's and they're in other ways. So what I'm doing right now, I'm finding angle b. So I'm going to write in what I actually want to find is cos of angle b. And the a squared and the b squared that I want are the two angles that, are, that make up angle b. So 18 squared plus 24 squared minus and c is the side directly across from angle b so minus 26 squared and remember the a and the b was the 18 and the 24 so i go 2 times 18 times 24. now if you punch that into your calculator uh, the numerator you get 24 plus squared plus 18 squared minus 26 squared gives us 224 
And the bottom, 2 times 24 times 18 is 864. Now we're finding the angle. So that is cos B. So to find the angle B, I have to use the inverse cos on my calculator. Cos to the negative 1 of 224 over 864, which turns out to be 75 degrees. Okay, now that we know that um, B is 75 degrees and the side across from it is 26, I can actually use sine law. And so we'll go back to sine law and say finding Let's find angle A. So let's say finding A, uh, this time we're going to use sine law. So I'm going to set up sine law, and since I'm finding an angle, I'm going to use the version of sine law that has that on top. So we'll say sine of A over and across from A, I have 24. So let's use sine A over 24 equals sine, and we know B is 75, and the side across from the 75 degrees is 26. And now all I have to do is multiply both sides by 24, so I know that the sine of A equals 24 times the sine of 75 over 26. And now just to make that more clear, what I did to get sine A by itself was multiply both sides by that 24, which cancels on this side. So I'm left with sine A equals 24 times sine 75 divided by 26. And my calculator tells me that 0.8916. And to figure out what A is, I need to take the inverse sine of that number. So sine negative 1 of 0 0.8916. And that tells me that A is, in fact, 63 degrees. Now, lastly, since I now know that, uh, know those two angles in the triangle, it would be silly to use either sine law or cosine law to find the third, so third angle uh, because we can just use angle sum of a triangle theorem. So using angle sum of a triangle theorem, uh, angle... Uh, we found B and A, so angle C is going to equal 180 degrees minus 75 degrees minus 63 degrees, which turns out to be 42 degrees. So we have now solved this triangle. C is 42 degrees, B is 75 degrees, and A is 63 degrees. So we found everything we needed to know out about that triangle. We're going to finish off this lesson with an example of a word problem. Um, what we have here says example three, a plane leaves London and travels north 55 degrees east for 350 kilometers. So I need to uh, assume that London is at the center of this grid and the plane is going to go to the north and to the east. So it's going to go northeast and it's going to go northeast 55 degrees. Now 55 degrees is slightly past the 45. So something like that. I'll put that in there. And that 55 degrees is this rotation in here. It went north first and then east. So here's our 55 degrees in there. And it says that that is 350 kilometers. Another plane leaves London traveling south, 85 degrees west. So the plane is leaving. It's going to go, leaving from London. It goes south and then 85 degrees. So it's way, way over here, west. So this angle in here is 85 degrees. Which means that this angle in here 
is 5 degrees to make up that 90. And I know that this angle in here is 90 degrees. Now you have to be a little bit careful with the way you um, draw your lines on this so that you make sure you know which way the angle actually goes. Uh, that gives us this whole angle in here as being 150 degrees. That's a really big angle. Now, and that second plane went for 460 kilometers. Now what they want to know is how far apart the planes are after they've traveled that far. So what they're looking for in this case is this distance in here, represented by that thick green line. So we want that distance there. And what we can see is that we have a case where I have a side, an angle in between it, and then the other side that makes up that angle. So this is the perfect situation for finding a side using cosine law. So I need c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab times the cos of angle c. We don't have any a, b's, and c's at all in this case, so we just need to know that what I'm actually looking for is this side d, so d squared equals, and the two sides that make up the angle are 460 squared plus 350 squared minus 2 times 460 times 350 times the cos of the angle between them, which we found to be 150 degrees. 460 squared plus 350 squared is 334,100 minus 322,000 times the cos of 150 degrees. And now I'm just going to plug that whole thing into my calculator. And that gives me 612,960.18. And remember that that is, in fact, d squared. The last step we do is to take the square root of that big number. And I get 783, approximately, kilometers. And since this is a conclusion, or uh, since this is a word problem we need to conclude in words and say therefore the planes are 783 kilometers apart. And that concludes our law of cosine lesson for today.